then that's really limiting. Is this just going to be Cannon Wolf? Yeah. Oh my goodness, it is! Yep, oh it is. no, the nightmares are coming true! Because you need AP damage one way or the other, and if you're going to put Chovy on the least in, this is the only way you can really do it. I um, mean, no, 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 no. Chovy's on Orn, definitely. I, I, I already, I, I already cursed this. I cursed this ages ago, Wolf. It's have to be good, but I also think that maybe the gen is completely irrelevant because the four-one from Live Sandbox is Boy, dead. fighting a lot of tanks. Um, on pretty big tank, and uh, of course, you know, I guess this is theoretically going to be something similar. As uh, okay, in they go. The Dominus is there, and Chovy has been fully baited in. First blood goes over to Croco. No, we're not. Let's have a look at the replay, Wolf. Yeah, we'll watch this one more time. So look at Fate's health bar before this. Oh, never mind. Yep, we're going to jump immediately back into live <laughs> as Vista. Only level five as the Ornhorn goes completely wide. Willa safeguards out as Deft is going to miss his ultimate. And unfortunately, that just means some uh, extra beef. Uh, equalize all of that. Rift Herald gold. Scrocco takes this and for what? The yeah. scuttle? Like, Toby is so far away, even though he is going to have his ult here. It's just not worth it. Like, what? And yeah, then Willard Willer gets exhausted, but it still just gets out of here. But that almost is two. I mean, a whole lot of vision available as Willa up here towards the top side. Croco lying in wait as in goes the hook shot for the stun as Morgan keeps himself alive for quite a while. But the kick is just going to get Croco out of there. They might even be able to kill Willa as well, but he has the safeguard to get himself out. Decides to use the control ward instead of the minion wave, which I don't necessarily. Yeah, he's going to be able to clear the minion wave as Summit's going to make his way in now. And Willa does show up. Okay, they look for the stun. There's the flash out. Summit now well and truly deep under the turret. The kick back, but he wasn't even tanking. Croco uses his whole health bar to keep his top laner alive. As now Deft is looking to try and get the snipe here for the steal. Almost the turnaround from Summit, but it will be the kill taken by Morgan in the end. And it was a little bit greedy from Live Sandbox to go for this. And now, trying to take the Rift Herald here, they are really pushing the envelope right now. Yeah, Effort taking some piercing arrow damage. Does need to be careful, as he loses a lot of his engage ability if his health bar's at half. It's Fate now, facing off against Chovy. It's not going to be the leash on the Rift Herald, but it looks like Han Life Esports do want to go for it. Deadly Flourish not going to connect onto Chovy there, who's now just trying to get this wave pushed back. Searing charge. Safety of the turret is going to be there, but Live Sandbox grabs some control here of mid. Now should be able to move it on up towards the Rift Herald once again. Ah, they're trying to start a reset on this. It's really close. I mean, the, close. the gauge combo between this Orn and the cannon is very scary. Look at the positioning of Live Sandbox. They are stacking up. There's the headbutt as Croco's going to have to get out of there. No Moonfalls for you as Willa does lock down the Rift Herald. But is the re-engage going to be there? Effort goes down so low. Willa secures the kill with the Resonating Strike. Great pulverize from Vista keeps him alive as now Hanwha looking for the turn. Willa gets over once again as Croco goes low. Now Fate is looking to try and take him down, but Willa survives. Prince is able to get it just at the end there. When that Ornhorn horn second hit comes through, as this is where you don't know Willer's here and you commit the worst possible moment and Morgan flashes so perfectly. We might see this again uh, on live, by the way, but watch Summit almost still kill. This is what I was talking about. Camille, you just can't deal with her in a side lane. And even in a dive like this, she's almost able to trade it back. That was just ludicrous. But also looking at Croco as well, just tanks the turret for the entire time. Look this was this. cool. The setup from Vista uh, into Trophy's ultimate made sure that Croco was never in range to get that Moonfall in there. He still managed to flash in, but wasn't able to get the full value. Yeah, and the Ornhorn just really zoned out the Diana at the beginning of the fight. She had to use her belt to get out, which meant she couldn't actually easily close the, the gap yeah, and go yeah, back exactly. in. And that's like, there's just so many things going well here for Honda Life Esports that you suddenly... Oh, the Gale Force to yeah. take him down. A lot of brushes for everyone to be hiding in as the Rift Herald goes down. It's going to be wandering a long way down the bottom lane. Liv Sambos, I think, should play. Gets her giving this up. They're going to lose That's so much for it. Cole is uh, certainly odd. Yeah. I'm not sure what, why that button was pressed as uh, Chovy is going to get his first ornament. Hits level 13. Has to flash out of the way at the hook shot, though. Ooh, they're really just trying to push the issue here. Liv Sandbox, and I think after the Chovy flash, and you know exactly where he is, I think you might be able to go in on this. Yeah. Chovy going to be able to get the Searing Charge knock up there onto Summit, whose tactical sweep doesn't exactly do that much. Renekton has to go deal with the yeah. charging Rift Child. This is why I just thought, okay, you probably have to back off of this one, Live Sandbox. Now they're grouped. You can't win this. You've got to go get other objectives on the map. 
It looks like they're going to try and trade for a turret, but uh, unfortunately they don't have any minions there, so that is going to be Willow locking down the Drake. They do not have vision of this. They have vision everywhere else. Yeah, that's just going to be the Baron started. All right, Curtain Call just to try and spot what's going on as Effort moves on over. The Baron's down to half health. Only four members here, of course, is now Morgan going to be moving back towards the base. Fate getting pushed out. Willis still on this one as Croco. He can steal this one away. We know that Sandbox very happy to steal as Deft immediately cleanses. He's going to go golden as well as Chovy gets on in here. Can they keep their Varus alive? No is the answer as Croco just eliminates him. Now Morgan finds the ulti. That's going to be on to four members. Goes golden at the very end as Willis trying to keep himself alive. Dives back forward as well as Chovy trying to keep that fight going, but it does not work. Summit is just invincible this game and that is going to be the ace live sandbox i think have hit critical mass and hanwa they couldn't stop it no certainly not and this is what i was talking about eventually you have to 5v5 fight eventually you will have to fight hanwa ip sports and my biggest concern for sandbox was that they weren't able to actually use their pressure to collapse in and punish but this time it's the baron itself that sets up the perfect fight and look at Krakow's positioning here he's got the long wraparound and as soon as they actually have the engage here Unlike eSports does, it gets turned on its head in an instant. And yes, we do see the very late Morgan Ultimate come through here, which is on to four, but the fight is already over. It's too little too late. And yes, Toby gets the big knockup, but there's no damage. There's no follow-up. They killed the Varus immediately. That's all they needed to do. That's going to be a Baron going over to Live Sandbox here. Should be the third Drake as well. There's yep. Toby looking to try and grab himself a kill onto the Crocodile, but I mean, it's going to just take a really, really long time Yeah. Um, for any of this to really happen, as uh, I think Fate pressed his W button, but um, not actually click on utilize him. that. Yeah. Doesn't have his stopwatch, so Fate is trying to bait this because his <laughs> teammates are running. Like, he actually is like, come at me, Chovy, in effort, and Prince are rotating over. Yeah. Um, we do have the uh, Ornhorn on coming out. Okay, let's see if we can find it. Oh, very delayed. Does manage to lock that one down. Chovy's really dead um, as the Drake is taken by Liv Sandbox. Vista now getting turned on. And, uh, I'd like to say that Chovy gave his life up for something bigger. But uh, sadly, you can't. Yeah, can't really. Yeah. Willa takes a lot of damage and may just die as uh, Summit looks for the ult, doesn't get it. That Moonfall under three was huge as Croco flashes forward. Not a lot of follow up though as Vista gets the Pulverize. Croco now going to get taken down as Morgan just at the last second finds the Zonyas. Fate is going to be able to finish him off and unfortunately they just do not have the damage. As Vista gets taken down, in goes Summit towards the back line. And it's all just elementary in the end. Live Sandbox will push for the win. Very, very close game throughout the early to mid game. But once we got to the mid game, the side lane pressure that was never dealt with just really started to pull Hanwha Life Esports apart. The Orn mid pick, the spike Orn doing the most damage in the game, by the way. <laughs> I mean, a lot of that it was actually <laughs> not just in the first 15 minutes. As you can see, a lot of it was later on. Because I mean, it was, it was when he was just smacking Fade around. Exactly. He was uh, like, okay, possible. I'm going to hit Fade a lot in the early game on that white part of the bar, and then on the later part of the bar, I'm going to hit Fade a lot as well in the side lane. <laughs>I think that's fine. Fate looking to play a scaling AP mid laner here. The Azir has is also going to be pretty strong against Orianna post six. You have some kill pressure there. Actually, it ends up being a lot more threatening. It's a matchup where you're not just going to get bullied by the Orianna, and they already took away the Syndra, so we're not going full control mage. Uh, we're just going down the Azir path here. So I like this adaptation here for Live Sandbox, the champion that Fate is pretty good at. Yep. Does uh, take a lot of power away from Crocker. It's going to be very difficult, but I think if there's any team that could pull it off, it's Live Sandbox. Absolutely. And it's also the fact that Trundle synergizes so beautifully with... Oh. Well, let's see. Summit has no vision of him whatsoever. He's verified that with his sweeper, but Summit is playing it safe. He's like, Summit's not right. I don't know where their jungler is. Yeah, there's the flash forward. Let's see whether Summit can survive. He flashes, but flashes towards Croco. As now they're seeing who they can actually take down as Croco takes basically no damage. The pillar is so good! Blast is massive, but the pillar doesn't actually ah. stop him from walking through. You know, Shelly making it to the world. She's uh, experiencing more Summoner's Rift than she often does, Yeah, uh, to be honest. As Chobi is going to get flashed on as they get underneath the turret and just wiped off the face of the Rift. Oh man, effort is... He and Kerry are vying for, for best support in the LCK. I think Kerry has still got the title at the moment, but this guy is everywhere all the time. On the map, One he's been. Our, 
Very successful. We're gonna watch this. This effort's very loud with this call. He's like, I'm going, I'm going. I've got ult. And boom. Solar flare into the universe. Get out of here. Good job. And, uh, you know, very, very clean. Indeed, indeed, is our fate. Looking for the Emperor's Divide. The flash comes out as effort comes back again. Willow, though, now loses control of his mid lane. Should be able to take the Rift Herald as... Oh, it's down to two health. health! As Croco manages to get it! He will die for it, I believe. Yes, as the needlework is going to finish that kill off. As Fate off to the side, not actually able to participate. Shockwave lands onto Effort. He's going to be taken out as well. As Hanwha, they may have botched the Rift Herald, but the Rift Herald's not going to be able to get any plates. And also, they managed to win the ensuing fight. A couple Summit. of plates do go down there, though, as now Summit fighting against Morgan. Flay avoided beautifully by the Jace. The hammer pushes back Morgan, and Summit's already traded one for one. You're going to say it's 100% worth. Oh, absolutely. Two health, I think, actually, yeah, it was. as we called out. Like, I'm not sure this. who actually picked it up. Oh, oh, it, it was Renekton. It was actually... Morgan picks it up. The smite is missed, but oh, they get right. it. And Morgan picks it up here. Right away, and so he's going to be the one who gets it, which is fine. amazing. But it's yeah, it's fine. The summit dodges everything. This is such a god in this moment. Wants to kill Vista. Lantern gets placed here, and Summit's like, no, 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 I'm going for this. You guys can't just walk away from me here and give the kill to Willer. I'm actually going to take Vista with me. He was so close to actually as executing on the turret, but he decided, I don't think I'm going to get this. I know Gwen's nearby. I'm just going to go for the kill. So turns it earlier here. And the question mark ping as well. Yeah. <laughs> Coming down from one of his teammates. Can't see who it was, but anyway. This ends up being a really nice trade. Nobody says. Oh, come to. Oh, what a waste. <laughs> Going forward here on some of these upcoming objectives is not amazing. Well, this is a 2v2 as uh, Effort is going to get stunned. Willa, definitely not immune as we can see. Going to go golden for the moment, but uh, yeah, not dashing out of that one. That's going to be the kill going over to Croco, and Hummel Life Esports not able to respond with anything. That's a lot of shutdown gold as well, going over to Live Sandbox. And what I was going to say, also so point. Yeah, the, what they really have, the real advantage they have in this game is the Drake advantage, and to get picked right before this extremely critical moment. I mean, this is on the rookie jungler player here for Hummel Life Esports. Willer, oh, his ult works is always going to be great for you, and. His pillar is going to work no matter what level he is, no matter how many items he has A Summit. Yeah, we got a lot of wards in this brush as Willa takes so much damage. Summit trying to chase after him, but it's not going to be enough. Willa's going to fall. It's a one for one on the bottom side, Again. and that is what you want from your split oh, yeah. pusher. Oh. Start going to get away. So let's have a look at this one more time He's as already, Summit. He already had his acceleration gate up, so he doesn't even get to use it in the spike. Flashes onto the mist so that he can guarantee the yeah. damage. So well played by Summit. This guy is a master at dealing with Gwen. <laughs> so dangerous. As Chovy's in the mid lane, they don't have their shockwave for this skirmish. Yeah, for no turret here either. Solar Flare goes down as Fate is going to immediately get rid of Morgan. Chovy teleported in. Can he find a shockwave to try and turn this fight around? The box is fantastic, but Willa is dead. No smite available for the Ocean Soul fight. And the shockwave's still there. I mean, theoretically, they could try and go for something. There's still some damage. No ults for Liv Sandbox. So Three you really versus have to five. It. Do you think that this is ever going to happen? I don't think so. I don't so. think so, but you got to try, I think. You can't give this up. Chovy's going to get into the brush. There Go it for is. it. Okay. Dissonance comes out. They're respecting the orb. As Deft looking for even more. This Drake is going to come through here. But Croco knows that he has Smite. And they don't. As Oh, the pillar is beautiful. No one's going to be able to get in range. They confirm that that goes down. And the Shockwave is going to be used onto just one troll. As they also have the Ren to try and secure it as well. As Harmal Life Esports should at least be able to try and contest the area. But the turn is so dangerous. Effort looming once again with his bevy of CC, doesn't have the Solar Flare, but Summit, he's got full health and a lot of other things. There's a Shockwave, will connect onto Two Fate, immediately vacates the area as Croco's incredibly low deft, locks down the kill. And Liv Sandbox, they have to get out of here, and now Hanwha, with a lot of damage, are looking to start the Baron for themselves. This would not be the first time in this series where we see a Baron end up deciding the fate of one of these two teams, but at least Ow. this time with the damage output, the follow-up, and the, the lack of commitment, by Liv Sandbox here. They're able to walk away with their lives for the most part, set up for a re-engage here. And Summon is just doing so much in this game. He is huge. I mean, he's the one that stopped that Baron, you know, land yeah. a couple of shock blasts and make sure that they don't have the health bars to do it safely. And, and like, 
when you look at some of these items here for Live Sandbox, the itemization has been just like a race to try to get to the most possible damage, the most possible burst, as this is going to be the stun that prevents a lantern <laughs> take. And Morgan double is like... Double control yeah, ward. Double control ward and the pillar. Yeah, the pillar. <laughs> Double control ward, totem ward, and pillar. My goodness, you ain't clicking that Now, after this, uh, unfortunately, Hunter Life Esports' comp is still very strong, and we see another Moonlight Vigil do a ton of damage. This is going to force Live Sandbox to actually give this up, and Effort is going to die. But with all the damage that Summit puts off in this fight, while also staying at full health somehow miraculously, they cannot start it again themselves. So just going to be a vision war right now here, and they have Callista. So as you mentioned, like they can just start this again. Yep. There's no vision, and Hunter Life Esports have to respond. Well, I mean, they're going to spot that it's going Pillar. down, but it's going down so fast. The Pillar once again going to deny is the Solar Flare going to come through. Effort's just trying to stop them from getting in to try and steal the Baron, so he's going to sacrifice himself, and he's going to type Worth in chat, and I would 100% agree with it. I mean, because, you know, part of me think that, thinks that that might be the way for Hanwha. That's the idea. As uh, the, okay, the Jace is actually just going to do so much work, though, as Fate takes a lot of damage from Chovy, who is very strong. This Shockwave could certainly hurt. He needs to hit more than one person with it, though. As Death, he's at full health. He decides to go forward, though, so that's going to put him on half. It's on the wrong side of the team fight here, though. Chovy is in such a dangerous spot to actually hit that Shockwave. It's so risky how he's standing. Well, Moonlight Vigil will connect. That's a bit of poke damage, but they get themselves the shield. Oh my goodness, the shock blast was massive. As Azir is going to get taken down immediately. Solar Flare is fantastic. Vista dies immediately. And the same can be said for Death Effort. He goes gold and is now over the wall is Chovy, but he's not actually participating in the fight. Croco now chasing after the Oriana, who will be taken down. Morgan follows suit. That's the ace and lives Sandbox will get the 2-0. That's going to be a 2-0 tonight, and that is going to put them in such a good position here to potentially take top two spots here, skip the first round of playoffs. I think they confirm it. With a 2-0, I think they are confirmed first or second um, for Live Sandbox, which is just huge. It's pretty massive if they actually are confirmed. It, or at least that's what I read. Now that I think about it objectively, I don't think that makes any sense at all. So... There's it's a really good chance, there's though. There's still definitely a very good chance. Yeah, no, for sure. Is This is just desperation here from Monolite Esports. Two rough drafts back-to-back. -back. This one much better than the first, but still not enough. Yeah, a lot of desperation now as they try and hold on to their Nexus. But Prince should be able to hop on over and grab this one. They've got the Elder Drake buff as well, remember. As Death goes golden, Troco is going to die. The Emperor's Divide used just for fun as the Shockwave doesn't do too much, and that is going to be that. Live Sandbox with the 2-0 over Hanwha Life Esports. Man, that damage is big. Yeah, I think uh, I think your choice of Summit is uh, certainly looking pretty good. And we mentioned that it was a bit of a flat line. It was for so much of that game, just the gold lead not going anywhere at all. And then Live Sandbox decided to win. And yeah. uh, it's been the case for a lot of big. Thank you very much, guys. This is Jason with the POG Interview Translation, joined by Krakow Summit on the side of Leap Sandbox. Congratulations on locking in your spot in the playoffs, too. Playoff, you know, I'm glad that we made it. When we are at the 99.999 stats, you know, it, um, we felt good, but it felt even better that we finally made it to 100%. And Summit, you are back to the playoff stage after two years. I mean, if I missed it out this year around, you know, I, I knew that this is going to be so tough for myself. So I'm so happy right now. And Leaf Sandbox has been so strong against stronger teams as well. Croco. I mean, we all saw the potential, but how were you guys able to you know, burst out and hit the higher ceiling? First off, our coaching staff, our head coach, they have been understanding the meta so fast. And thanks to that, we were able to play accordingly. And everything worked out so well based on our practice. And because of that, you guys were able to play so well in 11.15 as well? Yes. We're trusting our coaches, draft, and everything. Speaking of your coaching staff, actually, your head coach in the previous interview said he's going to, he's about to lose his mind because of this long-lasting winning streak. Any message over to him as well? 
<laughs> well, in fact, during screams, well, we haven't been performing that well. So he was a little bit concerned. I'm pretty sure he was, but I'm glad that we were able to display a good performance. So I hope we can all trust each other and keep this going. He said he's about to lose his mind, you know? It can't mean something good or bad. I think he's kind of enjoying it, you know? So we do have to keep winning, but he does need to know how to enjoy this kind of a, you know, upward trend. <laughs> Let's get back to game number one. Last pick from Hana West b Sports was Kenan, and we had Orn mid after about 480 days. So, what was the plan in playing against that Orn? We didn't see it coming at all. And Kenan versus Camille matchup. You know, once you get, um, once you kind of farm well in the early game, um, you, it's really good for Camille. And thanks to my teammates helping out on the top lane, I was able to have a really good game. What did you guys say after you guys saw the last big cannon getting locked in? Did you think you guys won the draft or did you think that was a really effective pocket pick? You know, we were expecting Tovi to play DPS champion. So we were like, this could be not as scary as we thought, you know? So, yeah, I think that kind of helped us out a lot as well. And in the player comp, you guys were actually saying, we don't need to be impatient, we don't need to rush. Be was that because of your draft or was that because of the um, playstyle of the opponents? More about the draft and comps. The Kanan versus Camille matchup. You know, later the game goes, Camille can always, you know, outscale Kanan. And Krako, you were one step ahead of the opponent's jungler. You were able to get so much lead based on those play. Were you able to read? Uh, the opponent's play? <laughs> yes, I read it all, <laughs> like a book. <laughs> then, moving on, we had Gwen versus Trundle, Trundle matchup. Gwen got some nerfs recently, and Trundle is a champion that can actually deny a lot of the mobility of Gwen. What do you think of this champion matchup and Gwen Trundle itself? I practiced Trundle a lot. Uh, I, I don't think I have a trust practice trend a lot, so I'm not sure I played well. So I just followed my feeling. So you said Trundle is so hard in the end. Was that? Did you really mean that? Yeah, 100%. It was so hard to play. I thought you were a little bit in a low key showing off because you performed so well. No, no, no way. Summit, what do you think of his Trundle performance? I mean, I should have made better, you know, poke engage to get a repeller, but sometimes I miss those, so it's a bummer. Speaking of it's a bummer comment, you actually said, oh, that was so close after you traded a kill against three or four enemies. I have to run away, said Summit. And that it was so stylish. You even dodged the play. I had full stacks of my Conqueror, so it was natural that I got that, you know, Thresh kill. But I almost got the um, Eclipse shield, and with the um, Conqueror stacks, maybe I could have turned that around against Gwen as well. I had this imagination in my mind. You know, and you know, in such a in that kind of a situation, you can pull off some outplay, but it's a bummer that I couldn't really make it happen. I mean, Summit, he always does that. I was hoping he could get the Renekton too, you know, but you know, it was only one kill on Thrash. I was a little bit disappointed, but still, that was good.
We had a lot of fantastic performance from the top jungle duo, but also Effort was doing a fantastic work, making a lot of rooms, and he's so close earn to earning his 2,000th assist in the LCK. Any early celebration over to him? You go first, Summit. Effort. You know? Whenever I'm winning or losing the trade on the top lane, he always, you know, visits the top lane. Thank you so much. And hope you can, you know, always have a great time as a professional player and keep, you know, grinding. Let's keep this going. Gorilla <laughs> is so <laughs> flustered <laughs> to see change of Summit's personality <laughs> because he wasn't this kind of a guy when Gorilla was in Sandbox. Effort. I hope you can, you know, push this forward, pick up your 2000th uh, assist, and I hope I can also <laughs> prosper too. <laughs> <laughs> so let's wrap it up, guys. You guys locked in a spot in the playoffs, but you guys are vying for the top spot. And your next opponent will be Freddy Brion. They got a 2 0 victory in the first round, Robin. How are we going to get your revenge? I think we are having a really good result right now, whereas Freddy Brion is not having a good time. You know, they are struggling a little bit. If it's okay to say so, but I hope we won't get cut off guard. We will do our best in that series as well. I don't want this winning streak to go away. We're going to continue it in that series as well. Lastly, in the summer split, Leaf Sandbox are gaining more and more fans because of your romantic plays. You know, you guys were doing a lot of, you know, things on the social media as well. You guys are making a lot of content, uh, making a lot of interactions with your fans and your promotions. Uh, follow our official, you know, social media. Our mental coach, Louis, our puppy, is so cute. Come check him out. Thank you. Once again, congratulations on the win, and this is the end of the interview for Karka Summit and back to our casters.